Welcome to Quarter Flips, everybody. I'm Dave, and this is my channel. There is nothing wrong with your screen. I have just frozen the image to set the stage. Last year, shortly after New Year's, I uploaded a video that was a 2021 year in review. In that video, I walked from my house to the post office in the snow because that was our situation at the time. I'm going to make a similar video today, but we did not have snow this time. This time, my New Year's was much more peaceful. I got to spend the first with a wonderful view from Woodby Island back across the water to where I live. So I'll just put that view up and we'll talk about the year. Last year I mentioned that January 3rd was the one year anniversary of Quarter Flips as a YouTube channel. January 3rd now this year becomes the two year anniversary. In the first year I uploaded 79 videos. I did a review of the different videos that I put up. I'm not going to do that this time. If you want to check out the videos, definitely go back and check them out. And I talk about how the videos that I make that are how to style videos get more views and that I should probably concentrate on making more videos like that, which I mostly did not do in 2022. I talk about ending the year with 750 subscribers and talk about the goal of 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours, which I was going to need to get monetized. And then I went on to talk about the money from my online sales for 2021. I'm going to do that today also. But first, we'll talk about the channel stuff. In 2022, I uploaded 66 videos and I now have 1,358 subscribers as of this recording. For the videos, 66 is 13 less than the 79 that I released in 2021. But it's really even less than that because 14 of those 66 videos that I released this year are one minute long shorts that I released in the last two weeks of December. So the real number is more like 52 videos released in 2022, or one a week. My guess is that over time, one video a week will likely become my standard. My subscriber count rose from 750 to 1358, which the mathematically inclined among you will note is a decrease in the number of new subscribers for 2022. I attribute this to the lower video release count and the fact that I did not have the same pull from the initial subscriber base that may have come over from my earlier YouTube channel, Quarter Bash. My guess is that many of my first few hundred subscribers came over from that channel. I did get monetized, hitting 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in April. This was the achievement of a huge personal goal for me. I had wanted this for a long time done a couple channels in the past and never got up that high so I wanted to see if I could do it. The money is nearly nothing but every one of those pennies that comes in on these videos is extremely satisfying. Thank you all again for being here. I hope by next year if I do another one of these videos I'm going to be able to show better growth in the channel and I'm going to try at least now looking forward at the year I am telling myself and I'm telling you that I'm going to try to do some things to get more people over to the channel over the next few months, over the next year. We'll have to check back in in January of 2023 to see if I'm successful. All right, so enough about channel stuff. Let's move on to the money. Last year, I broke down my eBay sales and my Discogs sales separately. I said my eBay gross total sales was $15,943.25. And my Discogs gross total was $7,592.94. And then I broke those sales down by different categories. How many of each item I had sold, what my total gross amount was, what the gross average was, and various other details. I talked about how I needed a better way to account for these things over the year because it was a lot of work to put that information together to make that video last time. I talk about the need for this spreadsheet that I was going to have to create which I did my very next video, showed that spreadsheet and went through how it was gonna work. It's the spreadsheet that I used all year to keep track of the numbers I'm about to give you. And it made it much, much easier for me to put all this together and understand it. It helped me understand it as the year was going by. We will get to that in a moment. In the end, after all the numbers came together, my gross total sales for the year was $23,536.19. And then I had a real imperfect way of calculating the cost of getting to those sales. So I decided that my net actual total for the year was $16,775.89. And one of the last things I say in the video is that we will see if at the end of the year 2022, if I have completely failed, doubled that number, or tripled that number. Apparently those were the only three options I could think of at the time. 
I don't think either of those are correct, but I can tell you I didn't triple my number. I'll explain that when we get a little further into it. Let's take a look at the 2022 results for my online sales. I'm just going to combine eBay and Discogs. I'll kind of let you know as I go which platform I'm selling on as I give out these numbers. But I can tell you my total number of items sold in 2022 was 1,588. That breaks down like this. I sold 502 DVDs for a total of $7,681.90. These numbers are the gross amounts that come in before fees, before any shipping that has to come off, before anything else. That was an average of $15.30 per DVD sale, which was up $1.97 per DVD from last year. And that's why I made slightly more money while I sold fewer copies. The next largest category was everything else on my spreadsheet. There were too many things in this category. I need to break this up and I'm going to break this up for 2023. There were 236 items in that category for a total of $7,208.61, an average of $30.54 per item. Next, there was 10-inch or 12-inch vinyl records on Discogs, mainly LPs. I sold 125 of those for $3,408.75. That was an average of $27.27 per item. I sold 284 CDs on Discogs. For $2,810.71, that was an average of $9.89 per item. I sold 78 miniatures or miniature sets on eBay for $2,609.23. That was an average of $33.45 per item per sale, and it was my highest per item average of the year. Miniatures are great. I wish I could get a hold of them more. I sold 101 7-inch vinyl records on Discogs for $1,774.80. That was an average of $17.57 per record. 110 music items that could be CDs, vinyl, whatever, cassettes on eBay for $1,402.90. That was an average of $12.74 per item. 57 books on eBay for $1,028.43. That was an average of $18.04 per item. And 37 DVDs in lots. So when I sold more than one DVD at a time, for $866.65, that was an average of $23.42 per sale. And then I had the following smaller categories, which I will just throw up on the screen. That all adds up to total gross sales for 2022 of $29,445.92. That's $5,909.73 more than last year, which comes out to $492.48 more per month sold in 2022 than in 2021. That's good, but it was not good enough. My average gross sale overall in 2022 was $18.54, which was down slightly from $19.33 that I had going at a mid-year check-in video that I did. My average net sale, so this is after shipping fees and any time I paid out like a 50-50 split for an item I sold for someone else, my average net sale was $12.57. So my 2022 net sales total is $19,969.61. In the end, that's more than $3,000 better than the 2021 net amount and likely a fair amount more as I had not taken shipping and selling fees and stuff out of the 2021 total like I did this year. But it's not double, and it's not triple, but it doesn't feel like complete failure either. What it is, is a 19% increase in my net sales, at least 19% over last year, which is pretty good. I made 19% more money. And I didn't really take that option into account. I really thought at the end of 2021 that I would double sales in 2022. But there were various reasons why that did not happen. And I think mainly it was because of a very weak second half of the year, much weaker than I had expected. I ended up with other projects that I had to focus more time on. And it really took me away from selling stuff and from making videos end of the summer, into the fall. And by the time I caught up and started doing my 500 listing challenge and trying to get things going, that didn't really catch up to the very end of the year. I had a, a big hole where I should have had big increases. 
And then there were also, I'm going to say, even when I was going strong, there were still some sections of fourth quarter sales where things were really bad in online sales. And I had not seen that before. It wasn't expected for that time frame. Everything would be running along great. And then there'd just be days that were very dead. And then everything would pick back up again. And I saw other sellers on other channels also noticing this. I've seen some reports that there were some problems at eBay. I don't know if that stuff's true. I don't know if it's just randomization or if there really was something going on on eBay that was causing selling to get impacted for some sellers. I don't know. All I know is that things didn't come out quite as high as I wanted them to. So now I need to concentrate on 2023 and get those numbers up. And how do I see that going? Well, I'm not going to make a prediction. I'm not going to say that next year will be a failure or a success based on some arbitrary thing that I'm looking at now. I could get a few months into this year and have something else come at me again that will take me away because it'll be important and it could take me away from selling. And selling isn't the only place money comes in for me. This is just the reports of the selling that you see me do on the channel. So if another part of my life comes along, if a writing job comes along and needs my time, I'm going to have to focus on that and it will impact this if I can't work on it every day all the time. But let's say nothing like that does happen and I really am able to focus on selling and this YouTube channel for the rest of the year. I think both the selling and the channel are going to increase in good ways over the next year. I think the number to beat will be, I'll try to beat that 19% increase. And I, I do think I have an opportunity to do it. One of the things I'm doing is I'm, I'm restructuring the sheet. I'll throw that up on the screen real quick for those of you that have paid attention to this sheet. For you Excel nerds, I made some changes near the top. I combined DVD, Blu-ray, and DVD lots all into one column. I made VHS and VHS lots all one column. And I took toys and clothes out of the all else category. I also got rid of the real life category in the end that didn't seem to be fitting into online sales anyway, so it doesn't matter. I didn't touch the Discog stuff, but I added a whole new category, which was Hi-Fi. I have a connection for some Hi-Fi stereo stuff that I'm going to be selling over the next year, and I didn't see that it made sense just to include that in all else. It needs its own line, so now I have that. So my numbers will look a little bit different at the end of next year, or if I do another half year check-in, I don't know if I will, but I should have a little bit better information in terms of a breakdown of what actually sold instead of just my second highest category being a catch-all category. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for coming along. Let me know if you like these numbers videos. It will help me decide whether I'll do another one next year. But I figure since I started it last year, I should probably at least do one more. It's possible that I'll just decide next year just to start off in some other way and we won't go over numbers at all. We'll see when we get there. All right. Thank you so much for coming along. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.